Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, back from I don't know where, um, but we're back. And uh, we're going to do a video on how to make flowers. We're only going to make one, but the process will be similar for um, any type of design that you desire. Um, I'm also doing a little companion um, design video on how I design patterns for these flowers. Um, so that you too can share, have this information. Um, I stick these flowers on everything, on rings, bracelets, earrings, friends, cats, <laughs> any place I can put them. So I always make up a lot of my boxes of them. Um, and they're really fun to make. And there's a lot of different ways that you can uh, form their shapes. So pretty soon now we're going to get going. And I'd like you to follow along. So in case I forgot to tell you. I'm now an official YouTube police man, woman. And I know what you're doing over there. <laughs> Let's get to real, realness. So, inspirations for design can come from pressed flowers, real flowers. These Dover books are great because you can trace over the pattern and manipulate it um, like I have done here. Um, and that's a really cool thing about this. So... We will talk about that a little more in depth all right now. Sorry, I was gone. I had to go bust somebody, but it's all good. Okay, so this flower, I decided I'm going to try to replicate this. Um, and if you notice, there is uh, a linear kind of texture on here. So when you're designing, you need to think, um, am I putting some kind of finish on a textured finish on this, or do I want to roller print it? or do I want to etch it, or am I going to do a hammer texture, or am I going to do chasing a repose? Because this is all going to determine how you process the piece. So let's say you were doing chasing a repose, you wouldn't want to cut the piece out first. You wouldn't want to leave it on the metal like this and do your chasing a repose and then cut it out. If you were roller printing, you would roll your clean metal through the rolling mill and then glue your shapes on it. Um, and for hammer texturing, we're going to cut it out, which is what I'm going to do with this, I've decided, is I'm going to um, cut out my pattern and glue it to my metal and cut out my, my metal and then texture it before I start shaping it. So that's what we're going to do. In a shameless effort to achieve immortal famedom, I'm pushing a product. Avery, you owe me money. Um, I found this trick out. I was reading an old uh, Lapidary Journal magazine and somebody said they print their patterns out on this shipping label stock, which is totally cool because it's paper on one side and stick in the other. No glue sticks. So I'm trying it for the first time in front of you. Um, so at this point I've cut my flower out of my Avery shipping label. <clears throat> And I've taken my metal and gently sanded it with, uh, this is 400 grit, just to give a little tooth for the sticky part to stick. And I'm, that is officially brushing dust off. And this is the hardest part. There we go. It wasn't hard. Those Avery labels work great. <laughs> So there, there's my pattern ready to be sawn out. Um, so then the next thing I would do is go and saw it out. And um, then I'm going to move into how to form it um, and texture it and things like that. And good thing we don't have smell-o-vision. Um, the only drawback I have found for that paper today was that I have to use, oops, <laughs> I had to take it off with this. So I, I was going to do a really tasteless pun, but I'm not doing it. So um, I just, yeah, you need that to take the glue off the back. It's not a big deal. It's stuck on there beautifully, and uh, I'm very happy. So um, I sanded this down and cleaned it after using the, the oops. And now um, I could, if I was just going to form this, um, I would finish the edges on this, um, take off any burrs and, and hit it with files and then some sandpaper to make the edges really nice. But since I'm going to be hammering on this, I will wait to do that until I'm done sanding, uh, 
marring it with my hammers because um, the metal is going to stretch and deform a little bit and I will, I'll probably need to reshape it anyway. So I wanted to show you um, some texture samples with a hammer. I'm going to use this big Harbor Freight, I think it's an auto hammer. Um, and I'm going to use the edge here to make um, that kind of straight um, kind of lines that were on the photograph here. I'm not That's not a photograph. That's a drawing. <laughs> so we'll have a close-up of these metal textures in the video so you can see the difference. On this one, um, the, one the, the texture on the right is done on a steel block, whereas the one on the left is done with on wood. So I was think that it's much more pronounced on the steel so I would recommend if you're going to do texturing with a hammer at least if you want it to really show up do it on steel. I forgot to mention if you do not know how to saw with jeweler saw I have a video called how to saw on YouTube and if you don't know how to file or sand I have a video on that and I believe it's called how to sand and then I also have a video on um, finishing so check it out. So this big hammer and my little hand here are going to try to be friends. And I'm just going to show you one leaf because this is going to be loud and obnoxious. So I'm just trying to hit the metal and not the, not the steel block. So that's generally the idea. I could go in with this little one here too and fill in areas. Until I achieve the look that I want. And for the next petal I'll switch over to this direction. Like that. So. Um, that's that's the basic on it. You can use any any kind of texturing that you want. Use ball peen to make little divots and um, turn this on its angle. And you can do straight lines with this too on the side. Every tool you have can be used to texture. I bet. So uh, I'm going to finish texturing this, and then I'm going to show you the forming of the leaves. I will. I promise. So now we have sawn and textured our little blank here and I want to retain this pattern so um, I'm not going to use what I could use watch this magic the dabbing block we're not going to use that if if we can help it um, because this the steel will um, remove the pattern you you could use a wood one but we're not actually going to use any blocks I'm going to give you three options Three options here. One is you can put the piece in pitch. Um, see my video on Chasing a Rope is Eight and, and my webpage on pitch to learn about that if you're interested. Isn't this the cutest little pitch bowl you've ever seen? Oh, I love it. Um, or you can use the sandbag, which you can make at home with sand and leather if you're a seamstressy kind of person. Um, and then our cheap alternative is the crossword puzzles several weeks wadded up in a pile like this um, and the whole goal behind this is to push the metal up from behind so we want to make sure that this is flipped over with the front going down got it and then um, over here I'm going to bring over a series of options that are usable here for punching out the back so since this is on paper, we can use a metal punch or you can make your own punches out of dowels that are gently rounded for punching. And I want to try to find a size that is rather bigger, well, about bigger than this. Yeah, so I'm going to start with a bigger punch here and use my trusty leather mallet and start punching that metal out. Um, by the way, after all that little, oh, that hammering I did on it to texture it, I had to anneal this. So between each stage, you're going to anneal the piece. And I have a web page and um, 
a YouTube video on that subject también. Okay, so see how we're starting to get a curve, but this is not the way it's going to stay. Okay, right now we're just focusing on making those petals more like this where they're rounded. And I'm going to go to my sandbag. I think you need another layer of newspaper. And I'm going to switch to a smaller punch at this point. Tap down on that. And try, I'm rounding, trying to round the petals even further. And then I'm going to switch to one more size and anneal it. And then we're going to go and punch from the other side. Now I do this basic technique with almost all my flowers. It just depends on how far you push it. This piece, actually, you could even, if you had, let's say you decorated the inside, could be a nice flower right now. And you could um, slap in another one of these and then a slightly smaller one and, and make a rose. Um, so you know, play around with the deforming the metal because that's going to give the piece its interest. So I'm going to go anneal this and um, hopefully come back. 